just a potter in his cockpit seated. Black leather on his ass, keep a hustler heated. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be heading over to Pite's Performance to just check out the car again, drop off a little bit more money. And um, luckily I think the motor, I don't know, I'm sure if the new motor's in the car, but the, no, new mo the old motor's out. So hopefully we'll be able to get a better look at it to see how a 392 with uh, a blower on it for at least um, six, 7,000 miles. I think the car has like 12 on it and I got the blower like right around five or six or something like that. So. Um, should be interesting um I, I wanted to get a better close-up look because you know that was one of the big questions is whether or not a stock 392 can hold boost and it looks like it can i don't know how long it would but you know based on the damage or condition of the old 392 with boots for that period of time it looks fine just some carbon buildup, which is probably um you know i think a lot most of it is normal but maybe it was got a little bit worse because of the um rich uh, richness of the tune that was on there at one point so I don't know though um, in any event the the pistons all look fine and everything so no um no big deal we're of course gonna be taking the pilot so let me give you guys a cold start everyone loves a, a pilot cold start this thing's vicious I'm happy to report the my wife's 392 is doing excellent and we actually just got it cleaned so it's uh it's rather nice you know she still hasn't removed this maybe someone can bug her about it a little grapevine sticker okay so I'm almost to uh pites I just wanted to um talk a little bit about my vacation I I, I just took and as you know I just I we took the pilot and I did get, we did find some snow. It was pretty awesome. Also. And the main thing is how awesome this car and, and these tires did in the snow. I mean, I know they're, they're all terrains. They're, they're snow rated. So it's not like, you know, it's not like magical or anything, but my only other experience driving in the snow were with cars that were far less capable snow, like usually like on summer tires or just like on standard all seasons, never with like an actual tire that's designed for snow and all wheel drive. So it's quite impressive how big the difference is i mean i know i know that there was the difference but experiencing it was was quite something like the car like in the snow the car drove like almost like there was no snow like i can go full throttle on a, um from a light and it would barely like it, on the one two shift it would you know um flash the traction control but like right off the line it would just hook right up which is um pretty <laughs> pretty cool so um we are making one um small change to the build we're gonna go with the uh, uh, balancer in the front, um, you know, the, the front front pulley balancer. We're gonna go with a different one with a little bit of an overdrive, which will allow me to run a little bit more boost. Eventually, I might have to go direct drive, but we'll we'll see. Right now, we're just gonna run um, the the upgraded um, center pulley, which will give it more boost, and then possibly adjust the um, the top pulley on the Pro Charger as well to get more or less boost depending on what is needed. I'm trying to just get enough boost right now while it's on this transmission for just like maybe like, you know, seven, 700, 800, something like that. And then after the transmission, we'll, uh, we'll crank it up all the way. Pulling up at Pites, wow, there's a lot of cars here. Where's my car, it must be inside. I love that RS7. RS7 is such a cool car. So here it is. Do you have the, uh, is the old motor around? Uh, okay. I just wanted to check out it, check it out closer. So here's the old motor. Out a little bit more. Did you just notice anything? I don't see anything bad. I mean, just. Yeah, it's just carbon pretty much. But no, um, no damage. A lot of people were curious about like how uh, a 392 looks after you know running boost for a period of time i mean yeah i mean you're gonna have some more carbon because you're you're commanding richer mixtures because of boost obviously so the more cylinder pressure you have the more fuel you need to uh keep everything happy obviously so yeah um so that's just kind of a byproduct you're gonna have a little more carbon buildup 
over time. But yeah. I mean, that, you, you have that in a applications yeah. as well. But uh, other than that, I mean, the cylinder walls look pretty pretty darn good. Yeah, the, the walls look good. The pistons look good. I mean, yeah. So. I would probably have assumed this motor had more than twelve thousand miles on it, though. Yeah, I mean, you could be surprised. I mean, car, it, it doesn't take long for them to get kind of dirty like that. You know? But uh, yeah, I mean, it's fairly normal. I mean, the big thing is where they fail is around this range right here because you got the most heat right here, and uh, it's uh, you see this, this part of the ring land will like pop off, and then but, uh, but yeah, obviously this one is not that way, but. Yeah, you know, that's usually how they fail. Typically, it's a piece of the ring land. So you'll see, like the the rings will still be intact. You can kind of see the ring right there if you look real close. Yeah. In the light, the ring will still be there, but like a chunk will be missing right here. What's funny is, you know, it's it's hard to diagnose that sometimes for somebody who hasn't experienced that before because they'll do a compression test and the compression will be good because compression ring's still intact. A lot of guys don't get as lucky as you. Though. I mean, I, I've, I've I've had a car. I literally had, I think, eight degrees of timing in it, 10 8 to 1 air fuel ratio uh, with six, no, six pounds, six, seven pounds of boost at 5,000 RPM. I wasn't even going for maximum uh, uh, power or anything like that. I was just doing calibration of the VE table at wide open throttle and thing like go. Just a piece of ring land, just like I just told just you. Just chipped off and yeah. then. And so we, we kill, it's not like it's. You see the knock sensors; they go, they they go ape shit, of course. But uh, you you uh, shut the car off and start it up, and it's, you just hear it. And then I pull the plug out, gap is closed, and I'm like, yep, yeah, pull the engine out. It's done. Wow. <laughs> They're just like that finicky, that touchy. Some of them, but other ones do great. And if that happens, what do you just have to change the pistons, and maybe do you have to rehone it usually, or? Yeah, you should always rehone for sure. If at the very least, just run a ball hone through it. But the thing is, though, they have these dropping kits that they offer. Which the dropping kits work, but as far as balancing is concerned, you know, uh, in Arrington you will even tell you uh, they've they've taken those dropping kits, like the piston and rod combo, and they still went to balance it, and it was like almost perfect, anyways. But nonetheless, it's always good to check that, yeah. if nothing else. So like I don't, I'm not one, I'm not a strong uh, believer in getting those piston and rod combos and pulling, you know, and just putting them in there and putting it back in the car. Oh, without checking everything yeah because here's the deal the the piss in the wall clearance is usually not ideal on those situations so typically when i do a a, a piston and rod just a piston and rod 392 i'm going to get a 10 thou over piston just to be sure and so then, my, you're, then you're going to rehome the block it, and just or, make yeah sure. we'll bore it at that bore, point yeah but, but yeah you bore up to like if it's ten thousands, you pretty much got to bore that five thousands, you can hone up to five thousands out of the out of a cylinder but uh basically at that point that way my machinist he get the piston the wall clearance that he wants okay that, so, makes, that makes sense yeah because sometimes because i've had them before i bought stock bore size pistons to replace the pistons that are in there because the car wasn't damaged wasn't hurt uh the engine wasn't hurt i got that and he's like yeah my the piston wall clearance is too too large on this i don't like this so he said get a tenth out over or at least a five thousand over piston so i did that and it was good you know so oh. that's the thing people don't think about with the piston rod drop-in deal yeah i didn't really think about that either yeah so it's I felt like they would just go in, but I know it yeah. will. It would work. Don't get me wrong. It but will run. But it, but it's like if you're looking for big power, that might not necessarily be the. So yeah, after about six, seven hundred horsepower, all the little things really start to matter. Yeah. You know, and then so it's like it's basically what they call a stacking of tolerances, right? Because you have a, a tolerance, something that may be kind of out of tolerance, but okay, acceptable, it can work. But then this thing combined with this thing being out of tolerance and this variable being out of tolerance, like a, the sum of the issues can exactly. Equal they're not much on their own but together they can exactly. be, be an issue yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense but yeah i mean you, you, yours looks good it's like pretty much all together yeah yeah it's all pretty much together um it's bolted the front access well excuse me the water pump back on there and the alternator um Still got to put the new balancer on. So you see here that the 426 uh, crank you come around here. You'll oh, see it has the little notchy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It has the keyway right there, which keyway is nice because obviously that keeps the balancer from spinning. Like the factory uh, crank snout doesn't have a keyway on it. And so that's why this balancer won't work unless you were to broach it. Um, it's basically broaching means just machining a provision in the uh, inside diameter of the, of the uh, uh, hub, which would basically be a slot 
Does that, that, that mess with the balance of it? Though? No, no, it's usually balanced. Yeah, you know, it's fine. Cool. Um, if it was if it was balanced, uh, if this was like an externally balanced engine, then yes, maybe. Uh -huh. But because it's usually balanced, it, sh it doesn't really matter. It's just spinning. Yeah. So um, but yeah. So basically, the balance you're going to get now is going to have the uh, the provisions already in it. Okay. Good. Yeah. And so did, was it nine percent over? Um, so on a five seven, it makes it. Uh, I, I got to ask them on the six four. I didn't specify because it said depending on the car or the engine, it may be nine to sixteen percent overdriven. Oh, okay. But yeah, so I got to call them on Monday and, and verify that on the six four, if it's nine or sixteen, that should be nine percent over on the lower side. So, okay. but but a larger lower uh, balancer is also going to help in uh, belt wrap. So you have more belt contact with a pulley. Look at that. That's. It's uh, it's crazy seeing it all torn apart, man. My poor car. It's got so much, <laughs> so much damage. I'm well, hit. you know, you drive it. Yeah, I know. Like, like king, not trailer queen, right? Yeah, that's that's true. I actually I drive it. Like not a lot of people. I mean, not a lot of people do, but you know, a lot of people don't too to avoid yeah. that kind of stuff. Uh, my car is the same way. I mean, I've got, I take that thing on track. It sees more track than it does regular road. Nice. And I mean, road course racing is super hard on cars. Yeah. Other than that, it looks good. It's coming along. Hopefully, we'll have the balancer here on, like on Wednesday. So. I had an 11, and I remember people weren't making a whole lot of power on the 85. Yeah. I mean, a, a little bit, but not like, uh, Well. not like it's boosted. They actually, the, the Coyotes pick up more on the 85 than an LS3 does. Really? Just NA to NA. Yeah, so I've noticed maybe like a 10 horsepower gain on an LS engine, but like 15, 20 pounds for the torque. On a Coyote, they'll pick up 20 horsepower. So, this is what I've noticed in doing the, the NA stuff, at least. Okay, that was, um, visited the car, everything looks good. Um, the car is uh, it's coming along. And um, trying to think what else there is to, to note, really not, not much. So we did talk a little bit about timeline and um, it's looking like it'll probably be another week or two to get the, um, the motor is gonna be in the car soon, but then we're gonna, we're gonna have to tune it. We're gonna have to break it in, like all that good stuff, and that's gonna take a little bit of time too. So it's coming along, and of course I'll 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 video what what we what we have, and um, you guys will be be in on all of it. So um, any any comments, questions, or anything, just leave it below. Otherwise, be sure to like and subscribe. You know I'm trying to build the channel, so I think the car is gonna be really cool, and I'm I'm actually kind of curious to see how everything works out, and I'm sure you guys are too. So it should be uh, should be fun. So that's gonna be it for now. Peace. Just a pilot in his cockpit seated. Black leather on his ass, keep a hustler heated. Weed is engaged in the pavement. Rubber escorts like I'm seeking arrangements. Push the gas, escalate the gauges, escalate hits on a camera.